Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nourish Child Podcast. Jill Castle here, your host, and it is the beginning of September 2023 and season eight of this podcast. I cannot believe it. I've been doing this, ooh, well, beginning my eighth year. So I remember sitting on my back patio at my house in New Canaan, Connecticut during the summer. I had listened to a ton of podcasts and thought, this is something I want to do. So I kicked one off in 2016, and here we are starting season eight. To those of you who've been with me since then, thank you very much. I appreciate your loyalty and your dedication to this show, and it just means a lot to me. So thank you for tuning in. And I hope I'm delivering on the topics you want to hear about and the experts you want to hear from. Today, I actually have a question from a listener named Aaron. We will be talking about what to do when your in-laws get involved and or comment quite a bit on nutrition and food and dieting and your kids eating and your feeding of your kids and their bodies. And it just gets a little mucky. And I thought this was such a great question from Erin. I'm going to play that recording and then I'll answer her question. But before I get going, if you are not on my newsletter called The Munch, you can jump on, go to thenourishchild.com forward slash munch, and you will get a every Monday morning newsletter from me. Okay, so let's listen to Erin's question. Here we go. Hi, my name is Erin, and I had a question about what in the world do you do when your in-laws at every family gathering, family vacations, they constantly talk about nutrition and weight and have this very black and white view of health. This is healthy. This is not healthy, that sort of thing. And I have a toddler. She's only 12 months now, but I'm worried in the future about her absorbing these messages. And I don't really know how to, what to say to them because it's so frequent and it's just every single meal. So it's hard. It's just, I feel like it would be hard to ask them to stop talking about something they always talk about. So if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Thanks. Welcome to the Nourish Child Podcast, a show about childhood nutrition, feeding kids, and dealing with the ups and downs of growing a healthy child. Here's your host, registered dietitian and childhood nutrition expert, Jill Castle. Hey friends, I'm Jill Castle, a pediatric dietitian, mom to four kids and host of this podcast. I started this podcast in 2016 as a way to help families and healthcare professionals learn more about nutrition and feeding kids. My goal has always been to make nourishing your families easier through breaking down science into understandable concepts you can put into practice right away and shedding light on and improving the emotional well-being of kids through feeding and food. You can always go deeper on my website, thenourishchild.com, where I have resources for children ages birth through teen. I'm always so, so grateful you're here, and I hope you enjoy the show. So, yeah, when your in-laws are seeming to constantly talk about food and eating and bodies and diets and That hyper focus is so hard to handle, especially if you're trying really hard to raise kids who are neutral about food and neutral about bodies. I talk a lot about this in the book that's coming out next summer. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that probably in the next couple of shows. We've changed the title a little bit, which I think has worked out even better. And I've got a little sneak peek of the cover jacket and have met with my marketing and PR team. So things are rolling forward. I'm super excited about it, but I digress. (laughs) What I wanted to say is 
family comments, whether they come from grandparents, in-laws, aunts and uncles, mom and dad, siblings, family comments about bodies and size, eating habits, food choices, while they may be coming from a place of good intention, they can be damaging to the emotional health and well-being of a child. One of the research studies that I used in my book, which was really, really amazing, a 2022 study out of Appetite, said this of family-based weight stigma, which is really bullying or teasing or making comments about weight. Here's what they had to say about that. Reports of family-based weight teasing are particularly high among women and girls at a rate of 15 to 29 percent, sexual and gender minority individuals at a rate of 40 to 70 percent, and individuals with high body weight, 33 to 87 percent. For instance, from an early age, individuals with higher body weight experience more mistreatment than their friends with lower weight in general and by their families. Likewise, women and children may experience more weight stigma in general and in the family home environment in particular, more so than men and boys. Indeed, recent evidence from a large multinational study of women engaged in weight management found that as many as 88% reported weight, stigma, or teasing from a family member. So what you say or what you suggest or what you rate or evaluate when you're around children absolutely matters. So what do you do about an in-law or a grandparent who comments about your child's eating, body, or size, or a grandparent or in-law who just constantly talks about food and what they're eating and what diet they're on and other people's bodies. How do you handle that? It is not easy. I am fortunate in that I don't and have not had that experience, but I have had parents and families that I've worked with share this frustration and concern Because intuitively, I think they know with all of that overemphasis and overfocus, it trickles down to kids, even if they're super young, like toddler age. I was just looking at a study and I didn't write down the the citation, so I can't really share it with you. But the gist of the study I was just looking at talked about toddlers, adults recollecting in their toddlerhood and preschool years, a moment when they realized because of what an adult said to them that their bodies were too large or too small or not right. And so when we think that perhaps our conversations around very young children aren't going to land, it appears that they actually do. And we have research to suggest that it does. So I just say that out there for any of us who are parents or in-laws or grandparents to Be choosy about the words that we use around young people because it can sink in and it can affect people for years. But what do you do when you have in-laws that are constantly talking about food and nutrition or commenting about your child's eating or their bodies? First, I would say let the spouse whose parent is involved in doing these activities lead the discussion. I don't think that personally for me, I would approach my in-laws about this myself. I would ask my husband to do it. And I think that that's probably a good angle to start with. Kids change a lot. Their nutrition needs, eating habits, and food preferences do too. So much so, it can be hard to keep up. The Nourish Child, a website designed for parents, who want more nutrition education, helps parents like you get crystal clear on raising good eaters. We've cracked the code on nourishing the whole child, whether you're raising a baby, a teen, or a child with health concerns. Our nutrition school and parent education programs help you get the inside scoop on food and nutrients, positive food parenting, and building self-motivated, autonomous kids 
who are good eaters. Visit thenourishedchild.com today. I always have suggested that a kind and curious approach is probably best because I do feel that for the most part, people are not intentionally trying to hurt others. So you can come at this with a question or a curiosity. You can come at this with a more direct tact, if you like, if that's your style. I think the whole goal is to set a boundary with your in-laws, allowing your partner to set that boundary. But one of the boundaries or one of the approaches you can do is is to summarize your parenting style and what you're trying to accomplish with your own children. Maybe it's you're trying to raise kids who like a variety of foods and you embody the mantra that all foods fit. Or perhaps you're trying to raise kids who appreciate diversity, especially with bodies, and you operate on the mantra of all bodies are good bodies. Perhaps you want your children to treat everybody with respect, everybody and every body with respect, and that's your goal. And you can say that out loud to your in-laws. Maybe you're trying to raise kids who love themselves no matter their size, shape, appearance, or food preferences. Letting the in-laws understand your angle with parenting and what your goals are can help them get on the same page with you, I think. You can also acknowledge that times have changed. We know more today about nutrition, psychology, eating, health, emotional well-being, feeding, building habits. Nutrition and being healthy is much more complex than just picking out fruits and vegetables and putting them on your plate. You can say to your in-laws, we are learning. There's a lot to learn here. And uh, we are trying to do it a new and better way. We are trying to be conscious of our child's physical health, but equally so their emotional well-being. Would you like to learn along the way with us? Another angle you could take is being curious about why weight and appearance and diets and food are so important to your in-laws. Maybe they grew up in a home that focused on appearance and it comes naturally. Or perhaps they've struggled with their own weight They've struggled to accept their own bodies and they're caught up in the societal norms of, you know, thin is healthy or not thin is unhealthy. Remember, dieting and food bias oftentimes will run in families. It's passed down from generation to generation. And there's oftentimes a connection that happens within these families around these topics of food and dieting and appearance. And even though it can seem to be an unhealthy way to connect with another person, it can just be part of the family fabric and the culture. For your own children, though, I would set a firm and loving boundary. You can say something like, in our family, We make a point to not talk about weight, dieting, body appearance, or size. There's a really good chance it will hurt our child. I know you mean well, but I stand firm on this request from you that I'm placing on you. I'd love to talk more with you about this personally, one-on-one, and share what we're learning so we can all be on the same page. So I think it can be done in a loving, caring way, but... By all means, your child has to come first and protecting your child. If these comments and this over-focus on food and dieting and thinness and body appearances and just appearance in and of itself is taking over every visit, you probably do need to address it. So you can help grandparents and in-laws focus on what really matters And this is my own bias coming through right now, but 
I think what really matters when it comes to children is their internal qualities over their outward appearance. Instead of saying, you're so pretty, you can encourage your in-laws to highlight the inner qualities they see in your child, like their creativity or their loyalty to their friends or their industriousness or their quick learning style. Whatever you see in your child or your in-laws see in your child, encourage them to highlight those things rather than their outward appearance. I think what also really matters is that habits and self-awareness matters more than what a child chooses to eat one day or following some food rules like clean your plate. So the day-to-day habits over time are really what is more important than a grandchild pigging out on desserts because it's Thanksgiving and all the favorite foods are there. I would also encourage you, if you have a child that you're really concerned about their own emotional well-being or you are invested in raising them to be both physically healthy and emotionally well, I would, you know, perhaps open up the conversation with your in-laws about how society really dictates some of the norms that are out there. Diet culture, the norm that thin and small is healthy and large and bigger is unhealthy. That is not the truth. There are plenty of people out there who are thin and small that are unhealthy and plenty of people out there who are larger in size that are healthy. You cannot judge a book by its cover. You can't tell what's going on with a child based on a singular visit or a week of vacation in the summer with the grandparents. I think we all can learn more about how society embeds these beliefs and biases and how they get carried out in our families. They're not necessarily healthy beliefs and attitudes, and we can, as parents, challenge them, even if the challenge is just with the in-laws or, uh, you know, the challenge is obviously much bigger than that, but we can do our part by standing up for our children and redirecting the focus where it can be redirected and challenging the norms that aren't really helping our children grow up to be confident and happy and healthy. And then lastly, I would just reemphasize that physical health is just as important as emotional well-being. What you say can hurt a child, leading to a negative self-image and lower self-esteem and make it challenging to grow up feeling confident and good about yourself, no matter the body that that child is in, no matter the food preferences that that child has. And so these are some things that came to me when I was thinking about this question. I want to thank Aaron again for submitting this question. I think it's a great question. I think a lot of parents struggle with this and want to handle it in a way that's caring and loving, but they also want to handle it in a way where they are putting their child first and really standing up for their child and cultivating environments where their children can thrive and be confident and healthy. That's it for this week, folks. I hope this question resonated with you. If you have a question, don't hesitate to ask. Run over to thenourishchild.com. Go to the podcast page and just scroll down a little bit and you'll see a little microphone there where you can just click on the microphone and record your question. I'd love to answer it for you. In the meantime, give that child of yours a loving squeeze today. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Nourish Child Podcast, where the number one goal is to help you grow a nourished child inside and out.